Hey guys, welcome back to Be Rich. Before we get into the video, I wanted to bring to your notice that my uncles Vinod Srinivasan, Anand Srinivasan and I have rolled out our Substack, which is basically a blog slash newsletter where we're going to post our original research onto it. And we've analyzed macroeconomic trends. And a lot of you know, my uncle Anand Srinivasan and I regularly write for the Hindu. And these articles are also going to be made available for you in the Substack. The link is moat moat investing dot substack dot com you'll find it in the description and in the video right now um we hope you go check it out we've put a lot of time and effort into it uh, and please give us comments and feedback on what you read thank you hey guys welcome back to be rich today we're going to be talking about warren buffett's huge pile of cash what does this mean for us as investors what can we take away from his huge pile of cash does this mean that he thinks there's going to be a stock market crash that's coming soon because few comments in uh, a lot of recent videos have said that look maybe warren buffett may be expecting a crash because of how he's sold his position in apple and he's holding a lot of cash may mean that he's looking some value buys in the market whenever uh, it corrects so let's examine what warren buffett has done in the past and what it could mean for today where he stands so the last two times where we saw warren buffett as active as we did was in 2000s and like during the year 2000 as well as the economy itself tanked in 2008 in the US and in the 2000 after the dot com bubble so the two two spots where we saw warren buffett being very active during the covid recession he was active but we didn't see the kind of activity which we saw back in the 2000s or in uh, after the 2008 crisis because no one expected covid to hit and we didn't expect it to hit so soon and Warren Buffett decided to pivot away from American companies into Japanese companies during this crash. So let's look at what he did before. So first of all, on August 3rd, we saw that Warren Buffett sold a stake in Apple by almost half to $84 billion. So he has $84 billion worth of Apple stock left. And its holdings of cash and treasury bills have increased from $189 billion in the first quarter of the year to $277 billion at the end of June. This is a huge jump, almost uh, a 50% increase, uh, which we see. And the backdrop of the announcement was when you had that, you know, unemployment was rising, inflation had cooled off, and uh, we didn't know where interest rates were going to go. Because on the one hand, we have information saying that inflation rate had cooled off, unemployment rate was rising, maybe it was time to signal uh, you know, a rate cut, but at the same time, the Fed did not signal a rate cut in that particular meeting. They said that maybe next one we might consider it. So uh, the markets were panicking and there was a worry about a sell off, which was going to happen. So this was when the markets were jittery. We saw that uh, the SP 500, the Nifty 50, and the Nikkei index in Japan, all of them had unanimously corrected. And now they've picked back up, but that's a separate story. But Mr. Buffett, that is Warren Buffett or Uncle Warren, as we say on this channel, has an almost spiritual level of wisdom in how he goes about investing because all of us know that he has the best record we've ever seen for a long term invest at the scale at which he was able to do it. And in the 2000s, we saw Buffett had started accumulating a lot of cash. Before the global financial crisis as well, we saw Buffett accumulating a lot of cash. So whenever there has been a recession, just a few years before that, we see that Warren Buffett likes to hold a little bit of cash. So this is something which has made investors, and probably rationally so, to think that, is there going to be a market crash? Why is Warren Buffett suddenly selling off his stake in Apple? Why is he suddenly, uh, he already had $180 billion and odd dollars in uh, reserves. Why is he selling more of Apple to make increase his reserves more? A lot of us were thinking that. So is there some reason to worry? First of all, Mr. Buffett or Warren Buffett cannot predict a market crash. And he has said this himself many times. He has said that, look, the market, even though is irrational, Mr. Market is irrational. He can continue being irrational for as long as he wants. He can, just because the market is overvalued today, doesn't mean that it's going to correct tomorrow. It may correct one year from now, one month from now, one day from now, and one second after releasing this video. But the point, maybe not one second after releasing this video because it will be out in the evening. But the point of this is to tell you that a correction can occur at any point in the timeline. It can be two years from now or three years from now. And 
Warren Buffett just knows that the market is looking overvalued or undervalued and based on whether it's looking undervalued or overvalued he decides to either increase his position of cash in his assets or he decides to reduce his position of cash in his assets so in a similar vein after the global financial crisis we saw Warren Buffett's uh, cash to balance sheet assets position decrease he started actually deploying a lot of money aggressively he was lending to people who didn't have other means to borrow at that time during the global financial crisis and he was buying out certain companies which needed liquidity and certain companies which had their stocks crashed by 30% or 35% he started buying heavily into those companies so warren buffett was doing the opposite of what the rest of the market was doing and this is something which we've seen warren buffett do well and most people don't realize that the secret to warren buffett's magic is that he is able to buy high quality stocks at relatively cheap prices relatively the key word is relatively meaning that you are not going to be able to buy coca cola at 15 pe or 10 pe maybe during a very long protracted recession you may be able to pick up such a good company at a very low pe but at the same time you can probably pick up coca cola at maybe 20 pe or 21 pe which is relatively cheap compared to its generally trading pe value and this is this holds true for other companies as well you want to pick up high quality companies when they're relatively cheap and warren buffett does this very well and the second thing is he is able to borrow for almost no cost the fact of the matter is through his insurance company geico what he does is he takes whatever float float is the amount of money which his company holds but is technically considered a liability on his asset uh, in his balance sheet because this is money which can technically be claimed back by his insurance uh, by policy holders in the case of any sort of major accident from payouts so for example if i am an insurance company and my uncle wants to get insured and let's say he has 10 other friends who want to get insured let's say all of them give me 100 rupees and one of them faces some health crisis which causes them to uh, have a hospital bill of 200 rupees that still means that until that hospital bill comes to me i still have access to 1000 rupees in capital to do whatever i want to do with and i can rotate whatever money is required to one of his friends and the point here that i'm trying to make is that the insurance business lets him borrow not from a bank but borrow rather from policy holders and this is a very ingenious way in which he was able to use leverage when leverage was expensive and he was able to use it judiciously so why did warren buffett sell that's another point but before we explore that i want to take your opinions on what we've discussed thus far to warren buffett secret sauce well this is like uh, sitting in the stands and watching tandoor cricket play yes it's beautiful yes it's nice as a watcher of the game but if you are a cricket player what do you learn from that that's a question so what am i learning so far from this first of all why warren does what he does to be honest only he knows nobody else knows but as far as this is concerned his cash pile is concerned he's addressed this many times saying that the reason why he is sitting on so much of cash and he said this for a very long time is that he has not found something which has better to invest in than holding on to cash simple as that he has not found anything of interest to buy third problem which warren has is you or me can go pick up 100 itc shares today and there won't be any dent in the market market will not move because we stepped in warren buffett looks at something the whole market sways towards it because of his immon- enormous size of his capital and his personality is very hard it's like a celebrity trying to sneak out straight like and rajin can trying to get out in uh, marina beach and have a cup of coffee there it will just be a mob it'll be crazy so it's like that in the stock market as far as his rock star status is concerned so these things make it very difficult for him so does this mean that if i have cash i should sit on the sidelines and wait like warren is waiting well you can if you have already invested enough capital to take care of reaching your whatever goals you have set and now you are sitting in surplus cash and you do not know what to do instead of doing something with it you can sit on it so that means let's say my goal was to achieve 1 crore in the next 10 years i am in my 9th year now and i have reached that 1 crore god i have been lucky wind has been blowing on my saved in a year and i have already reached that 1 crore so then i happen to come up on this information what warren is doing okay instead of investing 
for this next when I reach the goal. I can afford to take an experiment and sit like Warren does and let this cash accumulate in my account, which I was planning to invest and wait to see if something good will come and wait for the next, I don't know, whatever time frame which you find is suitable before you say throw in the towel and start investing in it. You can't do that. Would I do that? No. I wouldn't do that for the simple reason. I believe there is no point because Warren, his mindset is very different. He likes making money, watching money grow and investing and all that is what his aim in life is. For me, investing is a means to an end. That means I have a place which I want to reach and investing helps me reach there. Other than that, I have no other interest in investing and accumulating stocks. I'm not like my brother. I don't want to have all diamond needles in my pocket. It doesn't add value to me. I'm more of the mindset of majority of you out there. The reason why you saw this channel, why you were attracted is, is to make wealth, to make money, to achieve something in life which you wanted to achieve. To, as I used to say in previous videos, to gain your freedom. That money gives you only one thing, which is freedom. And you're working towards achieving that freedom. I'm in that mindset. Yes, it is very nice to watch, you know, Tendulkar play. But I'm not interested in playing cricket. So I like watching him play. Like the same way, I don't want to become a Warren Buffett. I don't aspire to be. But it's nice to watch a master play the game. And this is what I enjoy from this. And my learnings from this is, yes, he can afford to do this. Can I afford to do it? No. So I keep that very much in perspective. I am not at his skill range, nor can I analyze and see at his range, nor do I have the capital that he has. And even to take a risk, you know, if I had 100 Apple shares, I would not be in the frame of mind to say, okay, I'll sell 50 of them now and uh, reinvest it when the market corrects. Because if I sell 50 now, I'll end up spending that money which I have in my hand. I cannot be like Warren and let that money sit in an account and not do anything and twiddle my thumbs and eat $3 meals and go in a 20-year-old car and live in a $100,000 apartment when I have a few billion sitting in a I'm human and my goals are very different. So I would warn people against that too. Trying to emulate this behavior. Like Shashwit said, we do not know how long it will take before Mr. Market decides to crack the market. So you sell, yeah, you can book your capital and leave your profits inside the market and keep it in your pocket ready to deploy. But will you be able to control yourself as you wait? Maybe the first six months won't be so bad. Then after the first year goes by, you'll be like itching. Not only you, your whole family, you know, your wife will be looking at that account saying, we've always been dreaming of going on this holiday or dreaming of buying a car or dreamed of putting a down payment on a house or maybe you can close this home loan. Anyway, the market doesn't look like it's correcting now. Suddenly, before you know it, that money is gone and then the market corrects. It's happened. It's happened to me. It's happened to Anand. It's happened to a lot of people. Warren is very different <laughs> and he can sit. He can sit on it for a very long time. And he's proven it also that he can sit. And not only is he sitting, he's collecting more and he's sitting on even a bigger pile now. So that's my takeaway from this. So it's nice. It's entertaining. No doubt about it. Can we apply that same principle with us in our lives? Ooh, that's something I really think about. I mean, I have a question for you because this is something which I don't have an answer to. Maybe you have some uh, insight to offer there. I feel like he's trying to time the market per se. I mean... We, no. we say that we don't time the market, but... No, he is not trying to time the market. It's like like a cricket analogy again. You see Tandulkar come down the track. Or maybe Dhoni or Kohli, who maybe so you like. I like Tandulkar because it's from my generation. Anz Gavaskar. He comes down the track, he hits a six. Next ball, he comes and hits another six. Your reaction, my reaction, be okay, boss. You hit 12 runs this over. It's a good over now. Yeah. Don't risk it. That you see, come down a track and hit another six. <laughs> now we are feeling edgy. Yes, we love the guy. We're loving, we are loving the success. But now we're feeling nervous. We're like, why is he doing this? He can stop. The run rate has come down. There is no reason to take this risk. Yeah. This is how we see with Warren. When we see him having amassing two on first 80 billion, then 100 billion, then 120, 130, now 200 billion. You're like, whoa. You know, it's like watching ball after ball. And you see, and you're like, why? You know, Baba, what is happening? The point is we won't know what is happening. And I would rather lean on what he has said in the past because he hasn't said anything different till date. That he has not honestly found, in his point of view, something he feels is worth investing in. 
he has his own metrics like all of us have and within his metrics he has not think found something that will give him the kind of returns he feels he can deploy it he feels it's better in this kind of a market to buy the us treasury and sit it but like you said all the things he's doing points to the fact that he's waiting for the market to crack, crack. but he's not saying it yeah no and just to sort of bring some scale to what he's saying today if warren buffett decided after eating his mcdonald's you know mcmuffin burger in the morning for his breakfast he decided that you know, i feel like taking over mcdonald's he could buy the entirety of mcdonald's and still have 80 billion dollars in his uh, vault so we talk about tesla then <laughs> <laughs> so i mean this is crazy this, this imagine this, he gets elon musk run for his money <laughs> i mean that's true because yeah. he today if he decided that you know mark zuckerberg is doing a bad job i think i want to take over facebook i want to save humanity, humanity. Like, you know how yeah. he wanted to save humanity with twitter he decides facebook is ruining children's lives yes. and elon instagram is ruining children's lives he could go in and have a larger stake in meta than mark zuckerberg and still have money left over to buy mcdonalds in it, in its entirety so wh- wh- what i'm trying to say here is that um the kind of scale in which warren buffett is operating is mind boggling i mean anything even if he bought mcdonald's today and it went up by 10% that's only going to make a small dent in berkshire hathaway's asset and you know what is most remarkable as we age we men and women age we tend to get more and more eccentric in our behavior you know it's it's natural as we grow older we turn more conservative and we turn more eccentric in the way we behave you can see it. that's why the all the jokes in society about old crazy guys and old crazy men is that so it stems from some kind of truth in it and this man has still managed to keep intact his sanity yeah and his principles that speaks volume because the point he's sitting in at the stage in life he's in he can just say hey man i'm going swinging now he can do what he wants yeah, yeah he can cuz charlie is also gone okay he's up there numbers he can say dude you know what let me have some fun before i go yeah let me roll the dice a little bit and see what happens and he's not and that freaks volumes you know in my book at least it is yeah and we don't make predictions on this channel but if i were to make one prediction that would be that if warren buffett were to live for another 10 years or another 15 years we are going to see him see him make one of the biggest plays any market investor has ever made in the history of investing to the likes of something like rockefeller taking over all of oil we're going to see something crazy happen with the amount of money he's sitting on it's like a war chest which he's sitting on and if there is a crack which does come in the next 10 15 years and warren buffett is there to play then it's going to be very interesting to sit and watch what's going to happen and with that um if you have anything else to add i have nothing else to add but fascination yeah man anyway, this has been a very interesting topic i do hope people enjoyed it so Thank you for watching Beatrich. If you liked it, please hit the like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon to get notified of when we drop our latest video. And if you have any other comments or opinions you'd like to express, please leave them in the comment section below. We do make it a point to read your comments. Thank you again for watching Beatrich. Thank you. I told you about visiting Singapore. The date has been finalized. It's 25th August. It's a Sunday. Those desirous of meeting me in Singapore can drop a message to the WhatsApp number given below. or contact my team by an email my team would reach out to you and we will assure you of our best services for english and hindi there will be a separate meeting see you in singapore it's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me i have written two books in english the alchemy of money and ordinary stocks extraordinary profits these books are published by us and are ready if you want to procure a copy send us a message to the whatsapp number given below and my team would respond to you if you want an amazon kindle copy you can click the link below finally those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to beerichenglish@gmail.com once again i thank you for your support if you like this video press the subscribe button of my channel hit the like button and turn on the bell notification